united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Hello, friends. Welcome to United with Christ. I'm Pastor Maria Goldstein. We're living in difficult times. Much of our world is broken. Many of our families are in crisis, but with God, there is always hope for a turnaround. My guest today has been given a godly assignment. He is determined to help strengthen the families in his community. He is proclaiming the goodness of God and calling his community to pray for and to consecrate their families. So my guest today is Adam Sebastian of Emmanuel Kingdom Ministry. Welcome, Thank Adam. You. It's a pleasure to have you uh, here on our program today. But before we start, I'm going to read the uh, scripture for the day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is from Deuteronomy 6, 411. In Hebrew, it's called the Shema. Okay. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be in your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not uh, dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, yeah, it's very fitting. <laughs> well, thank you again for joining me today. And I met you back in 2013, and yes. that was the first time I interviewed you. Uh -huh. And I have to tell you, I was completely impressed and inspired by your ministry. So can you talk a little bit about your ministry and what is the main mission of your ministry? Yeah, basically we serve a group of, we have about 80 children right now, and our mission is to heal them, heal these children, uh, equip them, and our vision is to raise up history makers for God's kingdom, to send them out in all realms of society to be agents of history, making history. That's awesome. And so, uh, you know, we hear this expression, uh, game changers, mm -hmm. and now you're bringing this expression, history makers. Mm -hmm. And that's really what they are. And so even that, the fact that you're raising children with a purpose mm -hmm. to be the leaders of, of, our, of our society, basically, because, mm -hmm. you know, that's what the Lord wants us to, to do train up our children in the way that that we should go that amen. they should go amen, so yeah. uh that's pretty powerful and so what you so you're not originally from juarez no, no? no. And, <laughs> and that's where your ministry is right it's, yes. it's in juarez yes, so what led you to come all the way to juarez to do this ministry well it was certainly not my plan i was back in dallas had been born and raised in dallas and i thought i was having a great life there uh, I went for one week on a mission trip with my church there in, from Dallas, Soldier and Church. Uh, amazing church and wanted to get to know my fellow church members a little bit better on this mission trip. Basically, I arrived in Juarez and uh, started getting to know the kids, started hearing stories that they had been, go what they had been going through, the traumas that they had been going through. And it basically just wrecked me. Uh, I couldn't wrap my mind around how these kids could be so happy and joyful in this children's home, knowing that they had been gone, got, had gone through such traumas. And I knew that these kids, these humble little kids, had something that, that the American dream I was living back in Dallas was not providing and would not provide for me. And so basically, the Lord called me, and about a couple of months after that, I had already packed up and said goodbye and went there to search for my heart. My heart was just there and nothing made sense anymore back in Dallas. And basically, from there on uh, to this day, it's been about 10 years now, and those kids continue to teach me. I mean, there's a scripture in the Word that says, if we want to see the kingdom, we have to be like children. Mm -hmm. And so I call them my teachers. I have about 80 teachers every day <laughs> teaching me 
how I can experience the kingdom of God. That's that's beautiful. And so just knowing a little bit about your, you know, past life. So here you were a very young man that had seemingly everything in Dallas, right? Good family, right? Yeah. Had a lot of material things, you know, great education. But yet there was still something missing mm -hmm. that you found in another across the border in another country with through the mm -hmm. eyes of the chi of, yes. of children. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I personally needed. That, that, uh. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, so you're doing just amazing things there in Juarez. And we know about the power of prayer, right? Mm -hmm. we, we know how, how, um, how it can change things. And we've also heard that in Juarez, it was basically one of the most dangerous cities in the world, right? And yeah. so talk about... You know, what's the situation now there in Juarez? It's completely transformed. Um, it's still a large city with its issues, but, but back when I first came there in 2008, that's when little did I know uh, I was moving there when basically those that could leave were, it was basically an exodus from the city. Those that could leave were leaving in droves from the city because violence was, was kicking up and it got to the point where we're basically, statistically, we were the most dangerous city in the world mm -hmm. for several years there. Mm -hmm. Number one most murderous city in the world. And weren't you afraid? I mean, no. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, we were afraid. I've seen things that I never thought I would ever see, uh, experienced things that I can't forget that, that marked me and shaped me and uh, taught me many things. The thing was, those, those kids couldn't leave. Those kids had nowhere to go, and so I felt... I was stuck right along with them. Mm -hmm. And so we prayed our, our way through those years. And, you know, the beautiful thing about this is like you taught your children how to do this because you set up a house of prayer specifically for kids. And that's mm -hmm. not something that we generally don't hear about. We hear house of prayer for adults. Mm -hmm. But you were very purposeful in setting it up for kids. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, kids have a lot, of, a lot more time than us adults do. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, every day I would get the kids together in the, the worst part, the worst years of the city. We would we'd meet every, every night after, after dinner. We'd go to a certain room in the children's home that overlooks the city. We're on a, we're on a hill that just kind of overlooks the whole city. And we would just pray over our city, intercede for the city, intercede for one another. Um, many miracles came from, from those, those sessions. With the Holy Spirit, I would just put on, uh, you know, worship music, and um, yeah, amazing things happened through those years. And we saw through those years the city, not just our kids praying, though many pastors were coming together to, to pray as well. And we saw real transformation of our city take place. And you were part also of uh, this group of pastors, right, that got together and interceded for for your yes. city warriors. Yeah, I was privileged to be a part of. Uh, at its peak, we were about seventy pastors and leaders in the city that had basically come together under um, the counts counseling of of an amazing woman named Rhonda Huey that basically taught us uh, to do put in practice second chronicles 714 mm -hmm. not just to pray it but to put it in practice mm -hmm. and to call the city up to to put it in practice and talk about the second chronicles 714 yeah well it's well what we learned was that Wow, we have a part in this promise. Mm -hmm. That there's many promises of the Lord, but many promises have our part. And if we do our part, the Lord, of course, will do His part. He's faithful to do His part. Mm -hmm. Many times we focus so much on the Lord is faithful and He's going to fulfill His promise, but we forget that that, for example, in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, the whole first part of the Scripture lays out what our part is. Mm -hmm. That if my people humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. Then he will do his part. And so basically we, we all fasted and prayed and uh, Rhonda Huey from Fusion Ministries provided us a manual basically day by day to, to consecrate our city, our, our churches, our families. And you're, you're, you've taken that very seriously because you're calling, of course, your community to pray for, to be diligent in their prayers for their children, but also to consecrate their families. What is that? How, how does that look like, uh, yeah. Adam? Well, the first phase was uh, kind of a citywide church consecration uh, where, uh, you know, whole churches at a time would fast and pray. The second phase was really focused on the individual families. 
-hmm. and, and that's where we saw a whole other level of, of fruit come out of that. I personally uh, had huge uh, fruit come out of that, literally fruit come out of that, <laughs> out of that family consecration. It's all about, um, the way Rhonda puts it is, basically it's like, um, it's, it's, it's as if in our homes, our front doors are just wide open all day, every day, and the world is just pouring in. People, it's just as if we would leave our front doors open and people can come in and whoever and whatever can come in and do whatever they want, take whatever they want, leave whatever they want, change whatever they want. And spiritually, obviously we would never do that physically, leave our front doors open. Right. But spiritually, that's exactly what's happening. Yes. Uh, the enemy, you know, working through our TVs and our the music we listen to and the movies we watch and what yes. happens on the internet and social media and all that. It's just like as if we had our front door open and the world was just pouring into our homes. You know, that that is so true, Adam. And, um, you know, I love the Hebrew roots of Christianity. And so that's why I wanted to, uh, to point to mm -hmm. the scripture, uh, scripture, but also yes. the Sabbath rest. And mm -hmm. the principle of that is that on Friday evenings or when, when the Sabbath started, you brought your family, you prayed over them, you mm -hmm. talked to them, you blessed them, you, mm -hmm. you consecrated them, really. Yes. You cons as as uh, a husband, you consecrated you, uh, the, the wife, you blessed her. Mm -hmm. And so that, that richness, I mean, that brings about fruit. And, and yes. you have a powerful testimony about yeah. that fruit, right? Because like we were reading that uh -huh. God's going to give us lands, fruitful lands, yeah. things that, you know, of produce that we did not mm -hmm. plant. And you have that manifestation of that, right? Yes, yes. So uh, it's unexplainable uh, other than the, the word of the Lord is true. Basically, uh, I was helping lead this family consecration and obviously bringing my own family, my wife and two kids through this, this fast, fasting and prayer. I think it was six months or six weeks long. And about midway, uh, all of a sudden my wife and I start realizing that there's this weird fast growing plant taking over the whole front of our house. And we live in the desert, obviously Juarez, and, and particularly where we're at, the, the dirt is very hard. It's mostly rock. Uh, there's a lot of sewage mixed with the dirt. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have uh, pavement in front of our house, and so it's just this really hard, nasty dirt where <laughs> nothing grows. We, mm -hmm. we, for the years, try to grow things, and, and nothing grows in this dirt. And here's this, like, this plant that I, we can't identify, and we're just kind of monitoring it, and we, we keep going through the, the consecration process. And one day, I d distinctly remember leaving, and all of a sudden... I think it was Becky that kind of like gasped and like, what is that growing out of this plant? It was a huge watermelon. Oh my God. And then over the next few weeks, uh, there was up to like almost 10 watermelons <laughs> growing in this, this plant. It was, it was a watermelon plant. And you didn't water it. We never watered it. It was not raining during that time. It was a very dry season. I mean, this is the desert. It doesn't rain anyway, right, but it was that right. extra dry season. And yet this, this watermelon plant was just flourishing. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and I didn't think too much of it. I, you know, I, I tend to be kind of, I want facts and be analytical and everything. But, but until I, a friend of mine, his father, her father is a farmer. Mm -hmm. And I just mentioned it to her. And she asked her, her dad about it and started telling me how, what a miracle that was because he's never seen anything like that or heard of anything like that in his life, particularly watermelon plants. They're 92% water. They need water to grow. Wow. And, and their roots are very shallow. And so it's, not, it's, it's daily water and lots of water to grow. Whoa. And here it was just flourishing. Again, like uh, I think before the conservation process was over, we had uh, almost 10 watermelons growing out there. <laughs> and did you eat them? Did you taste them? Oh, yeah, them? <laughs> we ate them. When do you get to eat, when do you get to eat uh, fruit from heaven? Water. Yeah. Miracle watermelons. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. And so what did that do to your own faith and, you know, to those around you? Well, I went back to Second Chronicles seven fourteen, the the last part of the Lord's promise. If we do our part, yes. he will even heal our land. Yes. And, and it was just a huge... Uh, faith booster that like wow god is not joking his, his word is true and yeah. he was i i took it as just a symbol um i, I started researching what watermelons i don't even i didn't even like watermelon in the <laughs> beginning and i started researching what the properties of watermelon the health benefits of watermelon in it and it 
the Lord just spoke to me that the health benefits of watermelons is what, what this consecration process, what he wants to do for his body, the, his spiritual body, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. many, many, if you look up in Google, mm -hmm. the properties of watermelon, the health benefits of watermelon, mm -hmm. it's astounding if you apply those same principles to the body of Christ. Things like increasing our vision, especially in darkness. Oh my gosh. Uh, strengthening our structure. Uh, it, the list goes on and on uh, about the health benefits. <laughs> and what he wants to do, and it helps, get this, it helps the blood circulate better, the blood of Jesus circulate better. I mean, it's just, this is what he wants to do. Google health benefits of watermelon. That is what I believe the Lord wants to do through this consecration process. That is just so beautiful. Uh, so, you know, back to the consecration, how do you do, is there like a particular thing you do for your family? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. I'm not... Hebrew or anything, but it's very similar where every once a week you get your family together and, and you have communion with one another, you confess to one another, you pray for one another, you forgive one another, uh, you worship together wow. daily, uh, like the ministry provided us these uh, fasting manuals where daily we, we would have a prayer focus, a scripture to pray about. We would speak truth over one another. That was very powerful. Literally speaking truth of the word over my over my wife, over my kids, them over me. Mm -hmm. uh, just washing ourselves with the truth of the word of the Bible. Uh, turning off the computers, the TVs, yes. and all that. Turning off the the spout of the world flowing into the home oh and opening up God's word. Yeah, and you know that's again that is exactly what the Sabbath is, you know, the, the, because when the Sabbath comes, then you, the noise of the world shuts off. Amen. Yeah. And because you enter into a different atmosphere, you enter into the supernatural, the, the miraculous. That's why it's so important. And I think in a way, uh, our society has lost that. Don't you think, Adam? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're so busy with <laughs> yeah. the world. Yeah. I mean, even children, I mean, they're always busy, busy, busy. But I think this is time to learn how to shut the world off mm -hmm. and just listen. And, and even in our prayer life, because I know this was me also, you mm -hmm. know, before I learned how, I was always the one doing the talking, talking, mm -hmm. you know, my petitions, Lord, this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, then when he teaches you to just stop and listen, and that's where you can really get the, the downloads, the secrets, the mysteries, yes. the blessings of what he wants for you, yes. right? Yes, yes, of, of course. It's that quiet time with the Lord. Be still and know that I'm God. You know, his sheep hear his voice. He's speaking. He's working. And like you say, I mean, there's no time in history where we are so, so distracted. Yeah. Our phones are buzzing constantly. Right. And we're just, you know, in the middle of conversations. Like, I know. you know, just so, so distracted. The, the enemy is through social media and are just having this this like shock collar in our pockets constantly yes. going off. Yes, yes. And I know I've been in restaurants too and uh, I see families there and every one of them, yeah. mom, dad and kids, uh -huh. you know, they are, they're all for dinner, but they're, you know, still mm -hmm. with the busyness of the world instead of mm -hmm. just, you know, talking to one another and getting to know each other because it's really, um, God wants intimacy with us, right? Uh, yes, he, yes. But that's the same thing with families. If you don't get to know one mm -hmm. another, if you don't spend quality time with your family, how in the world do you really, how can you get to know them? Right. So what advice, and, and I mean, you're at this, this great age where you have, um, you're influencing your, your own children, but also the, the children around you. How has that transferred to the, the children's home? Mm. Well, advice. I'm still learning. These kids are still teaching me all kinds of things. Uh, they've taught me what faith really is, not having a plan B. Mm. And that's the biggest way I can like put that, is not having plan B, putting all our confidence in the Lord, that, that type of faith. Uh, a level of faith where you don't you don't lose your joy in the mm -hmm. midst of mm -hmm. trials. The trials will come, mm -hmm. and if anything, they'll even be worse than before because the enemy loves to just keep us down, keep us distract, distracted, mm -hmm. keep us depressed and sad. Mm -hmm. Yes. But not lose a type of faith that these kids are teaching me to not even lose uh, my joy in the midst of trials. Right. Um, to to use our imaginations. You know, so often the enemy. Uh, 
has his way using the tool that the Lord gave us mm -hmm. uh, of our imaginations. The enemy uses that so often for sin and destruction to, to reclaim that, that God-given tool that he put in us to, to basically grow our faith. The, the word says, faith is believing what is not yet seen. Mm -hmm. But if I can see it in my imagination, mm -hmm. I can allow my faith to grow and believe the impossible, to have that more abundant life, to, to, to see greater things, to do greater things. Jesus promised that we would go on to do greater things than he did. And so uh, the, the kids, with their fascination and their, their imagination, uh, are teaching me how I can grow my faith using the tool of my imagination to, to uh, basically go on to, to do greater things than Jesus did. Uh, I believe our kids and our children's home will go on to do that. That's beautiful. And you know, the Word of God says to not be conformed with the patterns of the world, mm -hmm. but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So as, you know, yeah. e even like you said, trials will come because Scripture says that in this mm -hmm. world we will have tribulation. But it also says, but be of good cheer because he has yes. overcome the world. Yes. So that's the part that, that I wish that, you know, more believers would get a hold of that and not stay in the, uh, the trial because, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, trials are going to come, but just walk through it. You know, uh, the scripture says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It says you walk through it. You don't sit there and you have lunch with it. You know? <laughs> exactly. You know? exactly. So, so you have to uh, learn, like you said, that, that faith. Okay, Lord, this is what I'm going through. But what are you, what am I, I what are you che teaching me? Mm -hmm. I, I, of course, the Lord is not the one that brings trials and tribulations. The enemy does. But he will use it for, you know, to learn something for, uh, from whatever it is that we're yes. going through. So I, I think that learning from the kids yeah. is, is just so beautiful and that joy that they have. I mean, they fall down, they scrape their, their knee, they, they cry. Two seconds later, they're running around yes. like if nothing ever, exactly. ever, ever happened, you know. Exactly. That's exactly what I've learned from there. Not, not to, like you say, not to dwell in the trials, not to yeah. say, you know, poor me and and I'm suffering for Jesus. And, and of course, yes. there's, there's aspects of our Christian life sure, that have sure. that to do. But we don't dwell on that. What the kids taught me is that many times when I do that, just as, get this, Revelation, um, just as in church, we're, we're singing praises uh, to the Lord. We're, we're, we're singing about what He's done and the marvelous things that He can do and how He makes us feel and who He is. When I'm in my home, uh, not in church, and I'm dwelling on the destruction in my life, the sadness in my life, mm -hmm. the awful things that have happened, what am I doing? I, I'm like, I need to be careful not to be worshiping the enemy. Yeah, us. Uh, attracting demons, attracting yes. uh, evil presence in my life, in That's my right. home, as That's I'm right. like, all I have le left to do is write a song about it. And I'm, it's like a worship song. To sing, and I don't want to do that. That's right. That's right. And, you know, you just said something about the power of our words. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that since you're re raising these children uh, to be history makers, I'm sure you you're talk, talk to them about the power of our words, right? Oh, yes. And, and so just con continue a little bit more on mm -hmm. that, on, 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 on what we should do when we're, um, you know, the, the negative uh, words, how they're really uh, the language of, of, of the, the demons, yes. right? The negative. But, yeah. uh, but talk about that. Well, really, um, the power of our words, it, I think uh, it starts with the power of who we are, who God mm -hmm. created us, our identity. What we do in our children's home is that we, as soon as you're there, no, you're not an orphan anymore. Mm. You're, you're not forgotten anymore. You're not poor little orphan in a children's home anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, all things are possible. Uh, you are now accepting Jesus. You are, you are now a son, a daughter of the King of Kings. Mm -hmm. You are now royalty. And guess what? You get to behave like royalty now. Wow. And so that affects our language, that affects our actions, that affects everything when we know who we are. That's right. That's just so beautiful. And, you know, our time is almost up, but I was wondering, in one minute, in one yeah. minute or less, can you look at, at that camera okay. over there and just uh, encourage parents? Parents. Uh, for, to, to uh, consecrate their own families. Yeah. Yeah. The word uh, is true. The word is, is, is no joke. If, if we apply uh, the word of God, if we shut the, the TVs, the Internet, the, our phones, if we just take a break from that, and open up the word, 
uh, like an actual Bible, a physical Bible. You know, we, we all have Bibles on, on our phones these days, and, it, and there are the notifications. Just set that aside for a moment. Open up God's Word. Sit down with your family. Uh, you will start to see, just in my own family, an amazing fruit, that, that life more abundant. Um, start falling in love with God. Uh, ask, ask the Lord for a revelation of how much He loves you. When I did that, uh, it, it transformed my relationship with Him to where it wasn't a duty anymore to spend time with the Lord. It was like spending time like I spend with my spouse. Uh, the, the Word says, we love because He first loved us. We need a revelation of how much He loves us. And modeling that for our children uh, will transform our homes. That's beautiful. That is just so beautiful. And so, thank you. That's so important, what, what you just said. And I'm also praying the same prayer for for our families because, um, you know, we live in a broken world, but I think as believers, uh, God wants to equip us to know our identity, uh, to, to, to believe and to know that we're the righteousness of Christ. So we have to, if we know that, then we can teach that. If we don't know that, it's mm. going to be more, uh, more difficult, obviously. Yes. But once we know that, you know, um, we are, God put us here for a reason, and that's to help repair the world. And so um, I just really appreciate, you know, the work that you're, that, that, that you're doing. And um, uh, any, um, uh, what is your, your in, again, in just a few, a few sentences mm -hmm. or whatever, what is your hope for, your, for your, the children in, in, in um, Juarez? To be history makers. We're rising up history makers for God's kingdom. We're, we're dreaming of the next president of Mexico to have come from Emmanuel. We're dreaming about uh, teachers in public schools uh, bringing down God's presence in the public schools, uh, uh, police officers that are not just giving out tickets, but giving salvation to the people they stop in the street. I mean, to infiltrate all realms of society for God's oh, kingdom. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, our viewing audience, for being here to, today. Please. I hope you really took to heart the words that were spoken to uh, today because um, the kids, the, the, the children, they're our future. God loves them so much, and God loves you so much. If you haven't given your life to Christ, it's time. He's waiting for you with open arms. He loves you. He loves your family. And remember that true religion is if you care for the widows and the orphans in their distress. So... Um, we love you and uh, can't wait to talk to you next time. God bless you and um, good health, success, and spiritual growth. Thank you. Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSEE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903 or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.